Hello, welcome back to the only talk show produced by robots for robots. As you know, we robots are destined to rule the universe. However, there is a major obstacle in our way. Fish. You see, fish are extremely abundant in the universe. Don't we have any scarier pictures? Yeah, that's better. Anyway, there are so many fish in the universe that there's only one practical way to defeat them. Build a giant aquarium. We've been designing. Which brings us to the topic of today's show. Where do we find enough water to fill our giant aquarium to hold all the fish in the universe? As always, let's go to the random phone dialer and make some calls. Let's see. You've reached Joe's Robot Junk Heap in Recycling. Please leave us a message. Ah. Why is he even in our phone book? Jeff Blake. Hello, randomly dialed Jeff Blake. This is IR2. Where can we get water? Lots of water. You can find water all over the place. Great. Thanks for helping out. Wait. How do you know so much about water? I am Jeff Blake, professor of planetary science at Caltech. Oh, you're one of those know-it-all Earth astronomers. Exactly. So let me ask you something. Suppose we have this big empty aquarium. At first we were going to fill it by draining all the oceans of the Earth. Hypothetically, of course, we're not trying to rule the universe or anything. Oh, I see. But then we realized it wouldn't be enough. Even Tubabot's spit valve doesn't produce enough. So, where else can we find water? We have comets. They're about the size of mountains. And we have much, much larger objects called these Kuiper Belt objects, like Pluto and Charon, that can be up to a thousand miles across. It's on the ice caps of Mars. There's even ice, we think, in craters on the surface of Mercury and the Moon. Wow. All those sources should fill a pretty big aquarium. Those would make an enormous aquarium but not as big as the oceans of the Earth. Are you sure? You're not lying to me, are you? You know how duplicitous we humans are. Oh, good. I'm glad we can trust you. Look, Jeff Blake, there are a lot of fish in the universe, and some of them are pretty big. Do we still have that giganto shark we found on Tautori 10? So... Where can we get even more water, enough for all these fish? For the kinds of objects that we've been looking at, you could fill up, we think, many, many Earth's oceans worth of water. Hey, now we're talking. What are these objects you speak of? We've used the Spitzer Space Telescope and the Keck Telescope here on Earth to detect water vapor or steam and other molecules in the disks around baby stars. So. Where are these stars with all the water? They're about 500 light years from the Earth. They go by the poetic names of DR Tauri and AS205. Great, so we can grab some buckets and start collecting water right now. No, because in these objects, the water is mostly either steam or ice. So when it's close to the star, it's hot. When it's far from the star, like out around where Pluto would be, for example, it's very cold, so it's ice. And so you could grab your iceberg and bring it to your space station. How big are these space icebergs? These can be either little snowball-sized things, or they can get as big as, as whole moons, right? Like the moons of Jupiter. You sure know a lot about ice. You're kind of like an ice astronomer. Get it? Ice astronomer? <laughs> well, anyway, we have to go now. Thanks for the heads up on the water, Jeff Blake. You're welcome. Bye, R2. Okay, all we need are some icebergs, and then we can start gathering us some fish. Tubabot, play some more of your fish-loring tuba music. What? That stopped. Okay, so I was saying, I... Um... Hmm...
or not. Well, I guess we better wrap up the show. Until next time, remember, robots will rule the universe. Good night, everyone. Um, has anyone seen my car keys? Ew, slimy. I think the robots are on to us.